Good morning. I'm out for a nice run. Finally getting out to the bay run again, which I've been a long time since I've actually run it properly. And I'm running it during a weekday where I thought there'd be less people. Still plenty of people though. I'm doing the bay run because I've got to do exactly 16K today. And I know a perfect route going by the bay run, which does exactly 16 kilometers. Uh, and there are certain sections along the bay run which are a particular bottleneck. Like the bay run has a running path and a cycling path and they're separated so that cyclists don't hit the runners. But unfortunately, a lot of people tend to just ignore that completely. So they walk in a cycling path. Now, if that wasn't bad enough, there's also a lot of people which, okay, it's fine, they walk their dog on the bay run, that's perfectly fine. Uh, they're supposed to do it with a leash. A lot of people don't do it with a leash. And their dogs are just running in the bike path or running across both paths. And it's just a recipe for disaster. I kind of wonder how many dogs have been injured, how many people have been injured because of this. I just know that the Bay Run is somewhere that I will never cycle on. I don't recommend people cycling on it because you just can't go fast enough to get any particular benefit out of it. You've got to be constantly weaving around people that don't want to get out of your way. One of the better spots in Sydney to go cycling, a um, really good spot is Centennial Park. So Centennial Park is a four kilometer loop and it is, uh, cyclists have priority, so they have right of way along the entire thing, which is great. It means that you can go really fast. So today I'm doing a long run. I'm trying to get back into running properly. And one of the things that I'm gonna be trying to do is to do long and slow run. That's building that base level, that really lower level of heart fitness. Uh, now, the problem with me is I have a much higher heart rate than most people. So where a lot of people say long, slow run, you'd be down at maybe 130 beats a minute, maybe 140 beats a minute or something like that. For me, it's 170. And I'm running eight minutes per kilometer at 170 beats a minute. Now some of that is a little bit of bad fitness at the moment. Some of it's a little bit of being overweight, absolutely. Uh, but part of it just is that I do have a much higher heart rate than a lot of people my age and my fitness level. I always have. Uh, when I ran the marathon last year, I averaged 189 beats a minute. That's more than maximum for a lot of people. Regularly during races, I'll get over 200 beats a minute. For instance, back when I did La Tap in 2018, was it? Um, that was at one of my fittest times I've ever been, the fittest I've ever been. And I still reached, I think it was about 212 beats a minute going up Col de Baloca. Now that is an extremely hard mountain, it's extremely hard incline, upwards of 12% thereabouts. But yeah, I was still up at a really high heart rate, much higher than probably anyone else who was going up that incline. So what am I getting at here? Well, heart rate doesn't matter as much as you think, or it's, you should, there isn't a catch all heart rate calculation. Uh, necessarily. So it, you definitely can't go the 220 minus your age. Um, that's just an average. Half the population will be below that. Half the population will be above that. Uh, you do need to kind of calculate your own heart rates. And you can do that by doing, say, a maximum heart rate test. And then also knowing your general resting heart rate. And therefore you can find your heart rate range. And then also know that your heart rate will change over time. So as you get fitter, as you lose weight, your heart rates will slightly come down, but they may not come down completely. And you may still be able to reach absolute maximums like my 215s, 220 beats per minutes during my extreme sessions. Another thing I will be doing is running to and from work. So it's, I've got two options there. I can either run all the way to work or I can run to the train station, catch the train, and then run from the train station to work. If I run all the way to work, that's about 15 kilometers. If I do the train method, it's a grand total of five kilometers each way. And I did the run commute method back in 2017 when I originally set the Guinness World Record title for the fastest marathon run in a Kung Fu uniform. I ran to work nearly every day, uh, bringing in my iron shirts once a week. Um, and sometimes I did that by car or sometimes I also did that via a bag that I've got, a special bag, it's called the Henty Wingman. Um, some of you may have heard of it or have it. Uh, it's a bag that actually rolls on itself so that you can kind of keep pressed items such as business shirts and pants pressed and ironed. 
Uh, it's not perfect. Things do come out the other end with a few creases and crinkles, but it's better than stuffing it into a regular bag. But at the moment at my work, I can get away with wearing polos. So to be honest, I don't, I probably don't need to run in, uh, drive in once a week, or, and I probably don't need to carry stuff in, in my Henty wingman bag once a week and probably get away with just a general running backpack. Um, which by the way, I was doing a bit of a clean out a few weeks ago or a couple of months ago um, and chucked out my best running backpack because I thought I'm not going to use that for a very long time. Turns out every time I throw something out, I need it like two weeks later. It's really annoying. So anyway, I've got a second bag which kind of works, but it kind of bumps the back of my head. So I'll work with that. I'm probably going to get myself a new running backpack sometime soon. But if I can get away with it, I'm going to try and run with as little as possible. I do have a hydration vest. So it's got um, front sort of straps um, and it's got a bit of a carry compartment on the back, which normally would be for hydration and a few small belongings. That's probably what I'm going to bring with me most days because in that I can bring a change of clothes if I need to change out of my running gear later on and a small towel and stuff like that. And at work, I do have a shower available. So I'm very, it's a great benefit of my workplace that I do actually have a shower available. But if you're running to work, uh, other options, if you don't have a shower available at work, is uh, you can just go in stinky and smell a little bit, or you can use a gym close by your work. Not at the moment, obviously, because gyms are closed, but when gyms reopen, you can start using that. Or you can just go to the bathroom and splash yourself with water. All right, well, I've got another six or so kilometers to go. I stopped to film this to try and get my heart rate back down. I was up at about 175, and it wasn't really budging much lower than that. Um, so now that I've rested and stopped for a little bit, my heart rate should go down a little bit more so I can maintain that low heart rate for long distances. And every week, whenever I do my long run, you want to try and do your long run at a very slow pace so that you can build up your lower end. Just build it up, build it up, build it up. All right, well, thanks for watching. If you want to swim bike one and exercise content every week from here in Australia, then hit that like and subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one. Cheerio.